Good morning. This is a little weird, me sitting in my living room, speaking to you folks, because we're all in our own homes. I promised somebody I wouldn't wear my pajamas, but it's fine if you are in yours. Sally is here, and Rick Huggard is manning the camera, so this is a totally new thing. I'll do my best. Here's how we start. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you're welcome at South Church. Some announcements. Uh, we're working toward finding uh, group meetings, to making group meetings happen online. Look in your email for notices for that. Otherwise, all face-to-face -face meetings are canceled at South Church. The Waste Not Want Not Meal is a drive-through this Wednesday from four to six. If you know anyone who uh, needs a meal, they can do that without touching anyone and without getting out of their car. Next week, we will be online as well. And please let us know if you know people who have a need that we might be able to respond to. And if you know someone that lives alone, give them a call. Chat with them for a little while. The social distancing that we're going through is uh, going to create some loneliness for all of us. Uh, Sandra uh, sends her greetings to you. Uh, she is uh, with us online but we're bringing down the number of people who are getting into one room at a time, so she's not here with us, but she sends her greetings. Uh, as is our tradition, before we begin here, let us uh, put our hands in our heart and bow our heads. Let's take three deep breaths together. As we begin, I'll let you know that there's a, there's a children's time, there are prayers, I have a message, and I'll read our appointed scripture for today. I hear some gathering words to focus. We forget that we're all intertwined, that no matter how scattered we're always combined. As, as the dawn joins the night to the day, so water ties ocean to bay. Remember as well that life would be hell without sharing your joys and your pains, your losses, your gains. Let's start out with a, a word for the kids. Today, our old friend Eunice is with us. Right, Eunice? Yeah, Annie, I'm, I'm here, I'm here. Yes, yes, good to see all of you kids. Yes, uh, I realize I'm, uh, well, uh, yes, yes. Well, you just calm down a little bit. Calm down, uh, I'm stressed. Well, what do you mean? Why are you stressed? Why am I stressed? What are you, crazy? Why aren't you stressed? Well, I'm a little bit concerned, but... Well, you know what's going on, right? There's a flu bug that you can catch faster than a fly ball. There's a flu bug that you can catch faster than flies with fly paper. It's a flu bug that flies with a... That flies... That fly, well, I can't really say it that good. Try it again, slow down a little bit. All right, there's a flu bug that you can catch faster 
than flies with a frog's tongue. Ah, yes, I see you are stressed. I am. Well, you know, I'm concerned as well because there are some things you can't do anything about. But there are some things that you can do something about. Like what? Well, you can help make yourself feel safe, right? You can be in a room that you like to be in. Yeah, I like to be in my bedroom. Yeah, and what would you like to do in your bedroom? Play Legos. I like to play with the Legos. I'm building a puppet stage with Legos. Well, that's very nice. And what else makes it you feel safe in your room? A peanut butter and jelly sandwich with a glass of milk. Yes, that's what I like. I feel very safe. Good, and is there anything else? Well, oh yes. I like the CD of Frozen to be on. Let it go, let it go. I can't hold it in anymore. Yes, yes, that's very wonderful. So you, you can feel safe. That's one of the things you can do. What else can I do? Well, you could exercise, you know? You could get out and run around the house several times, do some push-ups, do some sit-ups. Exercise your patootie! The only exercise I do is getting up from the couch, going to the refrigerator, getting a bowl of ice cream, and going back to the couch. Do you hear that, mister? Well, I do, but that's really not the kind of exercise I'm talking about here, you know? You don't have to do a lot of exercise. You can, you can just get out in nature and take a walk. Let the sun shine on you. Drink in that vitamin D. Drink in vitamin D! I drink water, I drink milk, sometimes a little cup of coffee. But I don't drink vitamin D! Well, what I'm saying is when the sun shines down, it's warm rays into your skin and that gives you vitamin D and that makes you more healthy. So you could go out and take a walk. Would that be all right? I suppose I could go out to the mailbox. Maybe walk down the street. Well, if you have an adult with you. Yes, of course. And I suppose I could walk down the street to my friend's house. Yeah, you could do that. That's a good idea. But you can't go in your friend's house. You could wave to your friends, right? You could shout their name out and wave to them. They could come to the window or maybe they go on the porch. Oh, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. Yes, yes. Ah, uh, Griffin! Hi, hi there. Eddie! Hi, hi, Wilson! Uh, Brooke! Uh, Evie! Hi, 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 Samantha! Hey, Artie! I have a lot of friends. Yeah, yeah I, I understand. That's, that's a good thing that you have a lot of friends. You think you could do that? Yeah, I, I think so. That's pretty good. Is there anything else I should do? Well, sometimes we get ahead of ourselves and we worry about things in the future that we can't do anything about. And we get all worked up about it. And when we do that, we should just stop and be present right here in the moment. And we look around and see what's here, think about what that is, listen to what's here, and that can bring us back from those worries in the future so that we just feel safe in the present. Oh, I see, it's like this. Oh boy, I'm kind of worried today. Oh, but next week could be worse. What about two weeks from now? What about a month from now? No! Wait, it's not a month yet, is it? No. Oh, 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 let me be present here in the moment. Be present, let me look and see. Oh, there's Denny. Oh, he looks as silly as he ever does. Look at that face. <laughs> and listen. Listen to his squawking voice. He's like a chicken. Oh, I feel much calmer now. Thank you. That was a very good suggestion. Well, you can do those things, you see. You can be in a place that you feel safe. You, you can do a little exercise. Not much. No, but uh, some. You can get out into nature. You can talk to your friends and wave at them. You can be present in the moment. Yeah.
present now. I see you. I hear you. Here we are in the present moment. Very good. And remember, you should always be willing to talk to your family and your friends if you have any bad feelings, and they will listen to you. Well, as you see, I have a lot of friends. I wave to all of them. Yes, and you can call me too. That would be fine. Okay, I, you're on my friend list somewhere, I suppose. So I will, uh, yes, I'll talk to you too. Well, thank you, and thank you for being with us today, okay? Can you come back again and we'll talk again? Yeah, I suppose I, I'm supposed to maintain a six foot distance from you though. And I really, I, I can't really get that far away. So I guess I better go. All right, bye kids. See you next week. <laughs> oh boy, and, and our tradition is Eunice, she's quite the something, isn't she? Why don't you sing with me? This little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine This little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine This little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine Let it shine Let's see what's next. We're going to do our prayers next. Um, I knew I was going to forget something. I did. I forgot my prayer list. Okay, hold on. Just a moment. Stay right there. Don't go anywhere. Okay, I got it. <laughs> Gee, and I just wanted to pull this off perfectly. Okay. Uh, these prayers have, uh, have come in online. Uh, prayers for everyone impacted by COVID-19, for caregivers and healthcare professionals, those who are making decisions for our community's well-beings, uh, for everyone whose employment and income is in jeopardy. For the health of Samantha Artruck's niece, Cayenne, whose uh, health is compromised. And for Cayenne's mother as well, Jennifer, who is pregnant. Rick, you had a friend, right? Zach yeah. and who that? Amy. Amy Lebo Yeah, Amy and Zach. For uh, prayers Just, for Amy and Zach. Just came through surgery very successfully on Friday. Thank you. Amy came through surgery successfully on Friday. Well, I'm sure that you have uh, names of people that you would like to lift up. And if you're sitting there uh, watching this with someone, just lift their names up for a moment so that they might come into everyone's consciousness who you're gathered there with. And this prayer uh, that I'm going to read uh, was sent to me by two people, uh, Sandra and Don Shaw. And uh, it's prayer for a pandemic. Its uh, author is anonymous, but it was uh, put out online by uh, the person who is in charge of uh, Habitat for Humanity in Ireland. Let us pray. May we who are merely inconvenienced remember those whose lives are at stake. May we who have no risk factors remember those most vulnerable. 
May we who have the luxury of working from home remember those who must decide between their health and making their rent. I'm sorry, I just lost the size of this thing right here. May we who have the flexibility to care for their children when their schools are closed, remember those who have no options. May we who have to cancel our trips, remember those who have no safe place to go. May we who are losing our margin money because of the movement of the economic markets, remember that there are those who have no margin at all. May we who settle in for a quarantine, quarantine at home, remember that there are those who have no home. As fear grips our country, let us choose love. During this time when we cannot physically wrap our arms around each other, let us find ways to be the loving embrace of God to our neighbors. And let us together pray the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Right, I call this my duct tape Bible because it's held together with duct tape. And our text for today is um, from the Gospel of John, which it was last week. We had the story of Nicodemus, and today is the story of Jesus and uh, the Samaritan woman at the well. Uh, as we hear the words of Scripture, let us listen in the words for the Word of God. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone to the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, Jews did not share things in common with the Samaritans, would ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. And the woman said to him, Sir, you, you have no bucket, and the well is deep. Where are you going to get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us the well with his sons and his flocks to drink, to drink from it? And Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but, but those who drink of the water that I will give them will, will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will become in them a spring of water gushing up into eternal life. And the woman said to him, Sir, give, give me this water so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. And Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband and come back. The woman answered him, I, I have no husband. And Jesus said to her, you are right in saying I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. And the woman said to him, 
Sir, I, I see that you're a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you say that the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. And Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship God on this, neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know, we worship what we know, but the hour is coming and is now here when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. God is spirit, and those who worship God must worship in spirit and truth. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of God will stand forever. So, quite the story. There's three things that I uh, would want you to know before we start with the story itself. Uh, number one is that uh, uh, several hundred years before Jesus' time, the king of Assyria was busy conquering the nations of the known world at the time. And he took people from five different nations to um, part of their populations to come to Samaria and to live in the cities there in Samaria. And so those people from the five different nations intermingled and intermarried with the, um, with the Jews who lived in Samaria, which is the northern part of Israel. And they became a, quote, mixed race. The Jews in the south, in Judah, in Jerusalem, they looked down on them for being this mixed race and so the Jews of the South saw themselves as being pure, while the Samaritans were impure. And so that division was broadened by the Samaritans starting their uh, own version of, their, of the religion. Uh, they worshipped on Mount Gerizim, while the Jews worshipped at the temple in uh, Jerusalem. So... Here's this divide. That's the number one thing I want you to know. The second thing is that the hypothesis that I work with the Gospel of John is <clears throat> that it's not a historical document. Uh, it was written, you know, 70 to 100 years after Jesus' lifetime. The timelines, the characters are all different than the other three Gospels. And several of the characters that are in the book such as Nicodemus last week and the Samaritan woman at the well this week, are symbolic characters. Uh, and the writer has created these conversations with these symbolic characters to reveal what the writer of John believes is the message of Jesus uh, to us. And the, the third thing is that in biblical literature, when you see a well, when a well is mentioned, you think of brides and bridegrooms, courtships and weddings. Uh, Abraham and Sarah had a son, Isaac. His wife was found at a well. And Isaac and Rebecca, uh, one of their sons, Jacob, he met his wife, Rachel, at a well. And in the book of Exodus, Moses met his wife, Zipporah, at a well. So there's something about wells and weddings in the Bible. And when the people who first heard this uh, text and John read to them, when they heard that Jesus was meeting a woman at the well, they're wondering, when's the wedding and who's getting married? So, those three things help us understand what's going on here. As the story goes, you know, um, Jesus asks the woman for a drink, and she, I think in a very sarcastic voice, says to him, why is it that you, a Jewish man, a pure person is the implication, would uh, ask me, a Samaritan woman, an impure person for a cup of water? And Jesus says, well, if you knew who I was, you'd be asking me for water, which sounds like a bit of an uppity thing to say, doesn't it? Um, and the woman replies, dripping with sarcasm, I think, 
You know, you give me water, you don't even have a bucket. How are you going to get down to the bottom of the well? Jesus said, well, if you, if you drank the water that I had to give you, you wouldn't need to come back to the well because it keeps renewing itself and renewing itself. And she says, I think with uh, uh, sarcasm as well, well then why don't you just give me some of that water because I'm sick and tired of carrying my bucket back to this well to draw the water up. That's a loose translation. She says, are you greater than my ancestor, Jacob? See what she's done there. She's kind of laid down the gauntlet. She's kind of set the bait. She's trying to bait Jesus into an argument. She's trying to get something going so that she can show him what, uh, what the right way is. Remember, um, some of you remember, uh, seven or eight years ago, when we had our first vote at South Church about whether or not we would marry uh, gay and lesbian folks. And um, we had several meetings and we came together and we actually had the vote. And the motion to marry gay and lesbian folks was voted down by one vote. And so after that meeting, as people were filing out, a fellow came up to me who was not a member of our church, but he'd been to several of the meetings and he had um, stood up and spoken against uh, marrying gay and lesbian folks, often quoting from scripture. And so now he returned to me and he was uh, gloating a bit. He said, well, your congregation voted against it. So it must be God's will that gay and lesbian people shouldn't get married. He laid the bait right out there. And I am not proud to say it. This is not one of the moments in my life that I was very proud of, but I took the bait. <laughs> I said to him, Oh, that's right. But don't you think that God would be a little more definitive than that? I mean, winning by one vote. I mean, God is God, right? And if God's going to do it, couldn't God have done it by two-thirds of a vote? Or maybe God could have done it by three-quarters of a vote. Or what about 99%? Now that would have been a definitive statement. God is that powerful. God could have done that. Well, he heard me say that, and he came back at me with Scripture. And then I came back at him again. And then he came back at me again. And our then-senior deacon, Ed Boardman was standing off at the wings and he saw that I was winging out of control and he went and stood behind this fellow, all six foot four of Ed and his 240 pounds and he looked at me and my face was red and the veins were bulging out of my neck and he went like this. Stop. 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 And I got the message. I stopped and the fellow walked off and I felt as stupid as I've ever felt in my life. What was I thinking? I mean, is this what it means to be a faithful person? Someone who follows Jesus to grab somebody off, throttle them, try to drag them across the line to the things that you believe are right? <laughs> or if you can't do that, that to insult him and be sarcastic with him in some way. I mean, as it was, right? We, we went through and we had a, a year-long conversation and then we voted and just about 80% of our congregation voted uh, to marry gay and lesbian folks. So my argument was all for naught in the first place. It really did no good. We tend to do that. Well, I should speak for myself. I tend to do that when am I, you know, when I'm in a bad place, I take the bait. But Jesus didn't take the bait. Jesus shifted a little. Jesus 
said to her, why don't you go get your husband and bring him back? We can talk with him as well. And she says, I don't have a husband. And he says, uh, you're right about that. You've had five husbands, but the man you're with now, he's not your husband. And she responds to him, oh, you're a prophet. Which sounds like a wonderful thing to say, right? But I'm imagining it was also a little sarcastic because she goes right back to laying the bait out. She says, your people say that we should be worshiping in Jerusalem, but my people, they say we should be worshiping on Mount Gerizim. And there's, there it is again. There's the bait. She, Come on, she's hoping Jesus would pick it up so that she could reach across and try to throttle him and drag him across the line to her side of things. But Jesus doesn't do that. Jesus doesn't take the bait. Jesus says the hour is coming and is here, in fact, when we won't be worshiping on this mountain or that mountain. This religion or that religion. This temple or Mount Gerizim. Potato, potato, tomato, tomato. Let's call the whole thing off. By which he means, of course he didn't say that, I just threw that in. <laughs> he, he is meaning all of these systems of thought that we have elevated this whole history that we drag into the present, even though it's important to be part of a tradition to realize that we stand on the shoulders of those who have come before us. But to hold those things as if they are the things that really bring us to, this, to God is to misunderstand that, that God is spirit. And those who worship God, worship God in spirit. And in truth. Now, last week, some of you will remember that uh, uh, he was talking to Nicodemus about the Spirit. And he said, Where the wind or where the Spirit comes from, uh, it blows, but you don't know where it comes from or where it goes. And this week, we've seen kind of where the Spirit is blowing. It's blowing Jesus toward the divisions in his culture, it's blowing Jesus uh, toward those who are different than he is, this woman at the well. So we can imagine that about the Spirit, that it, it blows us to others. But the writer of John, in the narrative that he is laying out, introduces a new idea now, and that idea is truth. Those who worship God worship God in spirit and in truth. But he's not speaking of an abstract truth out here somewhere, some philosophical truth. He's talking about the truth that was revealed about this woman at the well, or thinking of it as a symbol about Samaria. The truth is that she had five husbands, and the man that she's living with now is not her own husband. Those words were spoken to this woman without judgment. And there's the piece of information that is new here. In the text last week, uh, the writer said uh, Jesus was sent to the world not to condemn the world, but to love the world, to show the world the love of God has. And here he is actually acting it out. This is the truth. He doesn't take the bait. And this is an enormous moment in this woman's life, in the narrative that John is spinning for us here. She, in fact, will remember it for the rest of her life because it changes her view of herself. She doesn't have to defend herself anymore. She can accept herself just the way she is with her own history. And she doesn't have to be laying bait for people anymore. She's so excited she ends up after this text, 
that I read running into town and telling other folks and they end up coming back. I mean, this is a turning point in her life. So who is it that's getting married here, right? Jesus and the Samaritan woman? Absolutely. Bam, bam, ba da Bam, bam, ba da Samaria and Judah, northern Israel and southern Israel. That's the hope. That's showing that this is possible. But by implication, God, who is not housed somewhere in a temple or on a mountain, but, but blows free as a spirit between us. God and humankind are also being married here. And that means you and that means me. And it has implications for how we relate to each other because it's every human being on the planet, right? That this division uh, could impact. But it's this love of God and the spirit that, that dissolves that divide between us because we can look beyond the surface of others into something that is closer to the essence of who they are and like the woman, we can confirm their being. We can accept them as they are, and they can accept us as they are. And I'll bet you can remember moments in your life when that has happened to you, when someone has accepted you just the way that you are. It's almost as if that moment is eternal. Well, That's it. I'm done talking. And uh, I love the story. If you have any comments, make them on Facebook. Uh, we're going to try to have a Bible study uh, online this coming week where we can talk about the text uh, that is coming up. And I wish we could sing a closing hymn, but we're not going to do that. And I wish we could hear Norman just blow us away with one of his postludes, that would be grand. However, we're just going to have to settle for uh, the benediction. Go forth into the world to serve God with gladness. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted, honor all people, love and serve God, rejoicing through the power of the Holy Spirit, the grace of Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.